Hi everyone, let us discuss this example. So in this example, we have a sequence Xn in R2 with a Euclidean distance and we have to prove that it is a convergent sequence. So Xn is defined in this way. It has two different definitions, getting? So the first definition is true for n less than or equal to 9 and the second definition is true for n greater than or equal to 10. So we know that the convergence of sequence is not affected by first finite terms, actually it depends on remaining infinite terms. So that's why we will ignore the first definition since it is true for n less than or equal to 9 and the second definition is true for n greater than or equal to 10 and it is true for infinitely many n and that is very important thing for us. So let us focus only on second definition. Okay. So what we have here the first component is 2 raised to 10. So you know that 2 raised to 10 is a constant sequence and obviously it is convergence to the same point 2 raised to 10. And if you consider the second part, second component minus 1 by n, if you apply the limit, limit tends to infinity, its value will be 0. So that's why we can say the second component converges to 0. So therefore, we are going to prove the given sequence Xn is convergent and converges to 2 raised to 10 comma 0. So let me clearly mention that thing here. So we will prove that, let me mention here, we will prove that xn converges to 2 raised to 10 comma uh, 0 okay so this thing we are going to prove so obviously we are going to prove this using epsilon definition so let us take one epsilon first let epsilon greater than 0 be given okay so what will we do? We will work on some basic thing first. We will try to find the distance between xn and 2 raised to 10 comma 0. So see, consider, consider uh, distance between xn and 2 raised to 10 comma 0. So you know that here we have a Euclidean distance. So that's why d is defined in this way. This is equal to norm xn minus 2 raised to 10 comma 0. So let us put the values. Okay, norm. What is my xn? See here we have two possibilities. So out of that I am going to use the second part. Okay, since it is true for infinitely many n. So let me write here 2 raised to 10 comma minus 1 by n minus what we have 2 raised to 10 comma 0. Right. So you know well how to subtract one element of R2 from second. Component wise subtraction. Right. 2 raised to 10 minus 2 raised to 10, we will have 0. Minus 1 by n minus 0, we will have minus 1 by n. Let us use the definition of norm. It says square root of, square root of, square of first component, which is 0 obviously, and square of second component. So, its square will be 1 by n square. Since if you take square of any negative number, definitely you will have positive number. So, that's why I wrote simply 1 by n square. Let us go further. Okay. Let us go further. So, yes. So, what we get finally? So, this is equal to square root of 1 by n square. Right. So, after that, what will happen? Uh, we can take separate, separate square root. Square root of numerator 1, square root of denominator is n. So, obviously, we are considering a positive square root. So, this is a very important thing we have got. Let me call it as 1. So, yes. Therefore, therefore, d of xn comma 2 raised to 10 comma 0 is less than 1 by n. Okay. So, yes, less than we have got equality here. So, which is equal to 1 by n. Let me call it as 1. Very important thing we have got. Okay. So, after that, what I am going to do? I am going to use Archimedean property. Okay. So, let me write here by Archimedean property. Archimedean property. Tell me still you remember Archimedean property which we have already seen in first year BSc, right? So that property says if you have any real number, definitely we can find some natural number greater than that. So here also I am going to consider one real number, okay? So that my real number will be 1 by epsilon. There exist n belongs to set of natural number such that, such that 1 upon epsilon less than capital N. Okay. Archimedean property says for any real number. So that real number I am considering 1 upon 
epsilon epsilon already we have we have considered here okay so that property says definitely there is some natural number capital n i am saying it is greater than that real number okay let us go further what i am going to do i am going to shift capital n on this side i am going to shift epsilon on that side so therefore we will have 1 by n less than epsilon so this is inequality we get i am calling it as 2 okay there is no more space to write make a screenshot of it first then we will go further okay so now what will i do i am going to consider n naught natural number n naught okay let me tell you what uh, we will consider here so let n naught is equal to maximum of capital n and 10 okay see capital n already we have got right so equation number one and inequality number two i have purposely kept here since we are going to use them see in inequality number two you can see there is natural number n so that thing i have considered and 10 why i have considered 10 here since you know in a definition of xn the second definition is true for n greater than or equal to capital uh, sorry 10 right so that's why i consider 10 here so now we are free to use the second definition of xn getting so if you remember before getting equation one we have used that definition second definition here so that's why for using that i have consider that uh, n naught is maximum of capital n and 10 okay so let us go further now so n naught is maximum of both so therefore n naught is greater than or equal to capital n since uh, yes it is maximum of these two numbers so therefore it is greater than or equal to each of them I will take reciprocal of both sides. Let us see what will happen if you take reciprocal. So, you know that inequality will get change. Okay, I am calling it as 3. This is also very important thing we have got here. Let us go further. Now, I will consider, consider, I am considering n greater than or equal to capital N. So, if you take reciprocal, what will happen? Okay, n naught I will take. So, we will have 1 upon n less than or equal to 1 upon n naught so th this will be inequality number 4 okay so let us consider the definition of convergent sequence now so then for okay or what will i do let me mention here then from from 1 2 3 and 4 getting what i'm going to do i'm going to combine all four equations so therefore what will you have we'll start with this one so therefore d of x raised xn comma 2 raised to 10 comma 0 its value 1 by n we have got getting but just now we said it is less than or equal to 1 upon n naught right but see 1 upon n naught less than or equal to 1 by n okay but see 1 by n less than epsilon okay so that means a is equal to b b less than or equal to c c less than or equal to d and d less than e so that's why what can we say a less than e okay so uh, i should add here this is true for all n greater than or equal to n or this condition should be added there since this inequality is true for this condition so i should mention that condition there okay let me remove this part since you have already uh, written there okay so therefore now our conclusion is let me mention here d of xn comma 2 raised to 10 comma 0 is less than epsilon this is our conclusion with this condition n greater than or equal to n naught so this is definition of convergent sequence so therefore what can we say therefore sequence xn is convergent and converges to that point 2 raised to 10 comma 0 in r2d okay we in r2d so you know that where d is euclidean distance in this way we proved the given sequence is convergent make a screenshot of it then we will stop thank you bye bye